everybody it's alice k ruckle house from threshold of hanani and this is part two of going through the book of second john in the new inductive study bible now i'm not doing this specifically because i wanted to go through i'm not first john second john i'm not doing it specifically because i wanted to go through second john i'm doing it because i had a request to show you how i work in this bible um and how how i write in it and stuff myself personally and so um so I'm trying to do it so that you can see what I'm writing, but I looked at the last video and you really can't. So I've moved the camera down even farther, but that means that I have a very small space to work in. So I'm gonna do my best. I've tried to like put things that'll help me to know where I can, where I can move it to, but I've gotta turn it sideways to write <laughs> and stuff. So um, hopefully this will work out and hopefully this will be helpful to you. But the other thing that I did was I took pictures of what I've done so far and at the end of this video I'll take pictures also and I'm going to put them into a photo album on Facebook and I'm going to have it open to the public so I don't think that you have to have a Facebook account to be able to see it and that way if you want to look more closely you can. Okay so we stopped having started doing um, number B on the list of things that we're supposed to do for number one, okay? And if you don't have a new inductive study Bible, you can do this too, even without this, but I'm really showing you how to do this if you have the new inductive study Bible. Okay, and um, again, that's this right here. Um, it's the inductive study Bible that's put together by Kay Arthur from Precepts Ministry. I really, really love what she does super and and this is like i don't know my third fourth fifth or sixth copy of this bible um because i i just love it i keep thinking oh i should get a different bible next time and then i keep going back to the same one and i use the new, new american standard i believe that she has it in at least one other version it might be the king james or the new king james i'm not sure so you can look on amazon i'll link that down here down below and i'm using gel pens because that's what I have. All my other stuff is up at our house an hour away, so I just don't have those available to me, but I would not recommend using gel pens in your Bible because they'll probably leak through the really thin pages. Um, and you can watch the other video for my explanation of that. Okay, so we stopped because I was saying I would stop at that place yesterday because there was something that just really struck me as being profound for me personally. So I would carry this card around me for the rest of the day and really think about it and journal about it. I might even stop studying this for a few days if I feel like I need to journal about this for a few days because I think it's really important that when God shows you something that's specifically for you in the Word that you really make sure that you've found out what God's trying to show you for yourself and that you know how you're going to apply that. Okay, since I'm doing this to show you how to work through here, I'm not going to take that time right now, but I did write it on a card. I'm setting it aside and I am gonna spend some time thinking about this and writing on it and I probably will for a few days. Um, if, I, if I was studying Second John right now and I stopped to do that, then I would just read other things like Psalms or something that to me is a little bit lighter um, in the meantime while I'm working on that. I kind of differentiate and this is an artificial differentiation, okay? But for me, I do two things. I do devotions and I do Bible study. Devotions is where I'm reading the word to worship God. It's more about my relationship directly with him. Whereas when I study the Bible, um, it's more like I'm studying about him. And I am still talking to him and praying to him, but it's more, I guess my devotions are more God focused and my Bible study is maybe more me focused, more academic. And again, that's, that's kind of a very artificial definition. That's just for me, but just to kind of explain to you how I work. Okay, so we're listing things about John. So the last thing that we said was that he's writing for the sake of the truth, which was from verse two. Okay, so then he says, grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Son of God in truth and love. Now I could put, you know, that grace, mercy, and peace will be with us, that is about him, but it's not specifically about him. And what we're looking for right now is to learn about John. Okay, so let's go on to verse four. I was very glad, now this is definitely about him, I was very glad to find some of your children walking in truth just as we have received commandment to do from the Father. So, how am I gonna say that? John, John is 
glad when others walk in the truth. Okay, just saying that he's glad about these specific people walking in the truth is more about those people than about him. But he's glad when others walk in the truth really does tell us something about him, that it really makes him joyful, that he loves when people walk in the truth. So that's something about him. Can you kind of see the difference in there? Um, maybe not, and that's okay if you don't. Okay, so verse 5. Now I ask you, lady, not as though I were writing to you a new commandment, but the one which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. Okay, so even though here's he's, he's doing this action, he asks her this. Um, I don't really see that as being something new about him that we're learning. This is love that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment that just as you have heard from the beginning that you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world. Those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourself that you do not lose what we have accomplished, but that you may receive a full reward. Okay, so there's a couple things there. Okay, so this is implied in the text, what I'm about to say. He doesn't come out and say, it's really important to me that you guard yourself from these deceivers, but that's that's implied that this is very important to him because he's he's talking about this is what he's asking her, um, and he's re he's actually reminding her because he's not writing to her something new, but this is important enough to him that he wants to make sure that he's reminded her of it. So this whole issue of the deceivers, the issue of truth and deception issues of truth and deception are really important to him are really important to him now if you didn't get that when you wrote it and when you were reading it don't go, oh, wow, I didn't see that. You know, I mean, you could say that, that's fine. But don't kick yourself for it. Because seriously, you guys, each time that you read through the Bible, you're going to get some different things out of it. I'm not saying that the Bible changes or that, you know, it's like, I'm not saying that the truth changes from person to person. I'm not saying that at all. In fact, that's almost exactly what John's warning against. But I'm just saying where you are is going to, in some ways, dictate what is going to jump out at you. There's so much truth in here that there's no way that you could possibly fathom all of it in one sitting. And so the Holy Spirit is going to bring out to you, you know, what he wants you to see. And that's going to be the, you know, like this whole thing about John was writing to her for the sake of the truth. You might, you might say, yeah, okay, that's true, but that doesn't really, that's not a big deal to me, you know, and that's okay. It's a big deal to me because of what I write, the way that I minister, my goals and my priorities and, and stuff. And so it's just, it's really important to me, but different things are probably going to be important to you. It's just like, you know, if we both witnessed an accident, you're going to see some different aspects of that than I am going to because of your background, who you are, what's important to you, and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, let's see. So we were just reading, let's see. Watch yourselves that you do not lose what we have accomplished, but that you may receive a full reward. Hopefully I am still in the camera here. And I don't know if you can read this yet or not. I'm hoping you can, but at least read along in your Bible if you can't see this on here. Anyone who goes too far and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. The one who abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house and do not give him a greeting. For the one who gives him a greeting participates in his evil deeds. Okay, so again, this isn't something that's said directly in here, but this is something that we can learn from John about this, is that he is, he feels responsible in a way and protective. He feels protective. I'm not going to say responsible, but he feels protective of his recipient. Recipient. Okay, and if it sounds like a romantic letter, it's not. The guy was really, really old by then, so he's not, it's not a romantic letter that he's writing, even though it does kind of sound like it. 
Um, he just really has a genuine agape kind of love for the people that he's writing to. Okay, so he feels protective of his recipient and he also is, he's concerned for purity of the gospel, for purity of the gospel. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Though I have many things to write to you, I do not want to do so with paper and ink, but I hope to come to you and speak face to face that your joy may be full and the children of your chosen sister greet you. So he's looking forward. He's looking forward to seeing them face to face. Looking forward to seeing them face to face. Okay, I would love it if you all wrote in the comments what God spoke to you about, which verses stood out to you, and what insights you got into your own life from this. And that would be just a really good um, exercise for you, too, in, pr in practicing finding these things and being aware of them and then being able to share those with other people. Okay, so one thing that I forgot to tell you about, because here I am on camera, so I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> So I don't know if it seems like I'm nervous or not, but I am a little nervous. So I forgot to pray at the beginning. I would always pray before I start studying God's word because it's important that we have the Holy Spirit helping us because, yeah, you can read through and you can do this all academically and everything, but in order for it to make a real difference in your heart and in your life, you you want the Holy Spirit's help. You want him to be able to be working in your heart. And so, you know, I, I mean, I don't want to give you a formula for what to pray or anything like that, but I would, you know, pray something like, God, I'm, I'm really excited about opening up your word. I know that you're going to show me something really fantastic. And so Lord, please just open up my eyes, open the eyes of my heart, help me to be aware of and alert to whatever you want to show me. That's basically what I would say. Do I say the same thing every time? No, I don't, because I'm just, I mean, it's just like you don't say the same thing to your husband every time that you see him. You say something different, um, but that's that's what would be on my heart, and that's what I would be saying to him. Okay, so we just did number, number B, and if we want to, we can check these things off. You know, you get a, I think it's an oxytocin, um, or maybe it's dopamine that you get a little bit of every time that you check something off. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not a bad thing to do. Okay, so record the theme of 2 John in the appropriate space of 2 John at a glance. Okay, and we're also going to do it right here. So again, this is going to depend on you. I have found that every time that I go through the Bible and I fill these things out, like say in the book of Philippians. Philippians is like my all-time favorite book of the Bible, okay? Maybe James. No, Philippians. So I, I always do Philippians. I always do James probably a few times before I'm done with the Bible. Um, and I find that each time I would make those chapter themes different because I'm at a different place and so God's bringing different things out to me. So when I write my chapter theme, don't expect that yours is gonna be the same. In fact, I would really suggest pausing the video right now and writing your chapter theme, then turning it on. And you know we can look at each other's chapter themes, but don't, don't think that yours is wrong because you wrote something different from me. So to me, what I see as the chapter theme this time is that John is very concerned for the truth, uh, for, for the purity and protection of the truth. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna say is, John is very concerned for the purity and protection of the truth. If you came up with something shorter that fits on that line, I applaud you, because <laughs> that would be ideal. As a professor said to me in college, brevity is not my strong point. <laughs> So I tend to write a lot more. So if you're writing less, that's a, that's a good thing. Don't think, oh man, I need to write as much as her. No, no, no. It's much better if you're able to say, state things more succinctly. Okay, so we're going to write this in here too as the, um, 
as the theme of the book right here. John is very concerned for the purity and protection of the, tr of the truth. Okay, I'm going to write that up here, theme of 2 John. Okay, so John is very, I would say actually very passionate. Ooh, now I've got three Ps. Very passionate for the purity and protection. I did not do that on purpose, you guys, of the truth. <laughs> But I love it when things work out that way. Three Bs, very cool. Okay, we could preach a sermon from that. Okay, so I did the John part. I did not do the recipient part. I would do that down here, but I'm not going to do that on on um, on the recording, just for time's sake. Uh, I didn't pay attention to when I started this, so this is a good place to stop for now. I'm going to come back with another recording to do the next part. All right, I love you all. I will see you next time. Bye bye.